Let me bring you our green stuff segments. We normally bring them from the garden or from the backyard. But with people's interest in the technology being at an all-time high, so is their interest in green technology. And it's never been more needed either. So today, we're going to take green stuff up on the roof and have a chat about solar hot water. Now, if you're someone who installed a hot water service years ago, hats off to you. You probably had a great big tank and a whole bunch of panels all over the roof. But while the principle of heating your water from the sun is not new, it's the technology that's changed. And I have Ashley Moran to talk me through. G'day, Ash. How are you, mate? Good, Adam. How are you today? Very, very well. Talk me through the technology of solar hot water now. Well, basically, the sunlight hits the outside casing, which is an outside layer of um, toughened glass. It then hits the inside, and it's trapped in there in a vacuum situation. So what happens is the sun penetrates through the glass, heats up the copper tube inside, and superheats this bulb, which has a tiny little bit of water in it. Mate, you were telling me earlier that these collect sun a whole lot better than a flat panel. How does that work? Well, what it does, it has passive tracking with the sun. They're around tube and allows the sun to get in from all different angles right around the tube all day long. As opposed to a flat one, which only really gets the peak sun in the middle yeah, of the day. Yeah, it only gets certain periods of the day, and these, are, these collect pretty much the whole day. What about, what about a frost prone area? I mean, the, you know, the temperature gets down. Does it make a difference to the collection? No, what it has is a sensor up in the collector in the header box. Yep. All it does is when it knows it's going to drop below four degrees, it can sense it, and it basically just puts a small amount of warm water through the system. So it doesn't, it won't, it won't? It will not freeze up. It'll still collect solar energy. While ever the sun is out, it'll still collect it. And still stores it inside. That's exactly right. The beauty with these things are, there's no interruption in your hot water supply. Because there is no water running through the tube, you can break the tube, you're still going to have hot water. And and how and they're easy to replace. I mean, if you've got 30 here, you replace the ones and you, you're straight back into it. That's exactly right. You only replace the ones that are damaged. Rather than replacing a whole big bit of glass, whole big flat panel, you're only replacing a damaged Which tube. are relatively in, uh, inexpensive by comparison. In comparison, yes. Well, mate, why don't we pop this back in, get off this roof, and you can tell us all about where the water's uh, stored and uh, how it's pumped through the system. So mate, upstairs we've got the tubes catching the sun, they're heating the, uh, the water as it passes through, but this is where it's stored. So how does it all think? Where, 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 what's the brains of it all? Okay, well basically, up on the roof there's a temperature probe. As the water is heated, right, it says to the little computer here, the resole controller, it says, hey, I've got enough water temperature up on there, and it turns the pump on. The pump then sucks water out of the tank, pushes it up onto the room, the roof to cool the water up onto the roof, it heats it up and then pushes it back down, this return line, and back into the tank. So realistically, if, if the sun is constantly heating, you have no cloud, no cloud cover at all, yep. this could look after itself. There's no additional boosting of any kind. That's exactly right. You won't need any, any, or you won't need any power. So what would happen though if we had an event of bad weather where there was no sun or not enough sun, how do you get hot water? You still will get some solar contribution. You'll still get some solar, but if it does, isn't enough to heat your water up to the right temperature, you'll use the electric element, which is still in the bottom of your tank, which generally you put on off-peak one. Right, which you're using now anyway. So Exactly. Exa so you're just reducing the need for that by using the sun. That's exactly right. What about, I mean, this is a fairly new tank. This was installed relatively uh, recently. Yeah. You can tie into existing. Yeah, we're able to hook this system here, the panel, the pump and the controller to an existing tank. It's called a retrofit. You put it on the existing tank. As long as the tank's okay, that's all that matters. But generally, we do go to a lot of places and they do need us to put new tanks in and we do prefer to use a stainless steel tank, which is an Australian made product by a company in Melbourne called Everlast. Yep. It's a stainless steel tank. And it's gonna last a lot longer. It's gonna last a lot there. longer than the normal tanks. Now mate, if we put an Africa system on, there's gotta be some financial benefits. What what kind of benefits can we see? A, from saving and B, from, from maybe rebates? Well, saving, um, will determine on how much hot water you use. Of course. It generally takes about four years to get a payback on this type of system. All right. Three to four years at current rates. Still fairly short, yep. Still short. Um, but across the board, across Australia, you will find that government rebates are available at the moment, but they will increase as time goes on. So uh, the idea, I think, is to uh, look into solar hot water. An Africa system seems like a new green technology that people are looking into, and maybe you should hop onto it and try it at home.